Good, good morning, everyone. Guys, this is going to be a wild one. Um, I'm going to be doing, this video is going to be mostly a reaction video. I'm going to stop this video at various parts. I'm going to talk about what I know and my understanding of radio, radio frequencies, uh, long range transmissions, and, you know, just little bits like that I've learned from the military. Now, this video is going to be a reaction video on some evidence that's apparently been found within the Pfizer and Moderna jabs. Now, I'm going to re report of this as objectively as I can. I'm going to tell you my thoughts. And guys, I'm just going to give you my thoughts where I tell you it's going to be speculation, a little bit of conspiracy. I'm going to throw that in there as well. Guys, I genuinely don't know what's happening. Six months ago, if you'd have told me this, I would have told you told you you're a crackpot, but we're going to go with the evidence. We're going to go what this, you know, this journal's released. And again, you know, what I will caveat is I wasn't there when these experiments were done. I wasn't there when these um, these reports were written. I'm not going to say I fully understand everything because I don't. I'm just going to look at the evidence with you objectively. We're going to stop it at various points and have a little talk about it. Guys, I'm not going to watch the whole video, but please try and share this with somebody you know if you've been jabbed or if you know somebody who has been jabbed, just so they can try and, you know, understand and make peace of what's happening. So without further ado then, guys, let's get straight into it. Where are we? That one. A warm welcome to this talk. It's Friday the 6th of September. Now, I've heard about this phenomena years ago, of course, but only just got some evidence to support it. So we can only just report on it now. This is from peer-reviewed literature, and it's uh, scientists based in Japan and South Korea. And what they've done is they've taken COVID vaccines, mostly Pfizer and Moderna, and cultured them, incubated them, to try and duplicate the conditions in the human body. And they've found nanostructures have developed. Now, I don't expect you're going to watch this video or, or be allowed to watch this video, but I'm going to do it anyway. And if by some chance a few of you actually get to see it, then that's brilliant. Now, here's the equipment that was actually uh, used here. Uh, it's stereo microscopes. Now, basically, all this means is you're looking at it in, with two eyes. Therefore, you get stereoscopic vision. And what happened was that initially, they developed two dimensional nanostructures and then some became three dimensional as well. And of course, you can see that with a stereo stereoscopic uh, microscope. Let's go and look at some now. That was the equipment that they were using. Uh, and of course, these days, you know, so much look down the microscope, it all goes on a screen. So you can. Guys, just to caveat this, you know, I've no idea what I'm looking at here. This machinery could be absolutely anything as far as I'm concerned. Um, I mean, it looks legit. It looks like it's real. It looks like it's right. You know, and the guy who's explaining it, he seems to be trusted and he seems to be, you know, he seems to know what he's talking about. Can take uh, copies of it. Now, these are from the publication. These are the, some of the nanostructures that were observed in uh, as I've said before, uh, conditions that were designed to duplicate human cells in the human body that developed. Uh... So from my understanding of what he's saying is these scientists, they got some of this um, vaccine, this chemical, whatever you want to call it. They then injected that or did something or put it in a dish that replicated the human body. And I'm going to assume that would be by heat and pressure. You know, I, I, I don't know how else that would be done from the covid vaccines the mrna the mrna vaccines now the scale here um we'll, we'll look well, i'll just show you a couple of pictures and we'll look at the scale so these are the sort of structures that we, they were finding i mean what the heck is that guys that is absolutely wild i mean right my childish um my childish brain guys is looking at that and thinking one thing don't laugh it's not a funny video um but straight away, guys, there's no straight lines in nature. You know, you learn that really quickly when you're in the military and you're doing like a, like for a sniper course, for example. You know, you're, you're taught very early on there are no straight lines. Now, that is pretty much as straight as you can be. So how have these things formed in the human body? Like, how, how has this happened? How, how has something got that straight? Go look through um, like nature magazines and nature and microscopic images of stuff. You will find nothing with a straight line like this. You know, that, that is a structure that spontaneously um, sort of put itself together, a spontaneous assembly of this structure from the COVID vaccine. Guys, just listen to what he said then. A structure that put itself together. 
spontaneously put itself together. This is absolutely like crackers. Seen uh, cultures. Now the scale here, uh, 10, uh, 10 micrometers. Um, so that's uh, so one one micrometer would be uh, one micrometer would be um, the size of a sort of a, a bacterial cell. Seven micrometers would be the size of a red blood cell. So you can see these are nanostructures, but this is a very detailed looking structure that has spontaneously assembled itself here. Really quite, uh, really quite. Um, um, yeah, well, look at it. <laughs> you know, that 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 spontaneously assembled itself. Uh, what the heck uh, is it? Um, now, uh, of course, as always, we don't have uh, I won't be giving full answers to these questions. <laughs> read the paper for yourself but this these this means the presence of these nanostructures needs to be explained by the manufacturers and by uh, international authorizing agencies and national authorizing agencies around the world this is a peer reviewed publication and i believe it gives questions to be answered guys can you remember when Keir Starmer was coming out and like you know and all the politicians in the United Kingdom were saying go and go and do this this is safe and safe what do you say safe and um, safe and effective you know it's apps like is this and again I don't know if this is anything untoward I don't know if it's bad I don't know if it's good it, guys it could come it could actually be good this could be a good thing I don't know it, this is just telling you what's happening you know but I can remember this there was this mask effort for people to go and have this procedure it, you know and i can remember in my head now you know uh, you know i can remember in my head now driving past where, where where this was happening and it looked to me like the beginning of an apocalypse movie you know like how they show you the newsread from the beginning of the, the apocalypse movie as the credits are coming up because they don't want to like you know explain the whole movie they want to start midway um, even if it's only that this is a load of rubbish, then that still needs to be uh, still needs to be answered. Let's look at a couple more pictures before we look at the text. Yeah, so he said it there, guys. Again, again, you know, this could be a load of rubbish. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying any of this is legit. I'm saying this is, you know, from the paper that we've been shown and the paper that's been peer reviewed and the paper that's been published. That's what we're going off, guys. You know, we we need more. You know, I would want more evidence and more independent research into this. Um, so these spy these here guys sorry for stopping it if I let me go four ones seem to come up again spontaneously just put themselves together spontaneous sort of okay so the first thing I thought of when I thought of these guys the, the these are spirals so like little springs for example now the first thing I thought of when I thought of that is I thought okay that looks like the inside of an antenna when you're in the military, you do lots of uh, work on antennas, and these coils inside that uh, inside your antenna, they will um, they will give you a certain frequency band, a fre certain frequency range. Now, I'd be really interested to find out if you can correlate this to a radio frequency or potentially a nano frequency or something. I don't know. But, you know, I, I spoke to my friend and he said it could, you know, that it could have something to do with Starlink or Wi-Fi. You know, I, I don't know anything about that. But what I will say is when you're making a radio, that, that's how you do it. You, you have a copper coil, then that copper coil will be a certain length. It'll have so, so many turns in it. And, and it's quite specific. It's not just a load of, you know, it's not just a load of wire turned in, in, in random. That's a specific turn. It's a specific coil. The length. And um, so... The length from here to here is has to be specific for it to take a certain frequency. <laughs> Another spiral there. Um, no. Look, guys, these, these come up again and again, these little spiral things that we could call antennas. Now, if they are antennas, and I'm not saying they are, but it was just my first thought, but if these things are antennas, what are they what are they meant to what's what are they meant to communicate with? The one there. Tell you what, I don't like the idea of these spontaneously forming in the cells of my body, if that is indeed the case. We don't know that, but if that's the case, I don't like the idea of it at all. Not at all. And 10 micrometers, that's actually pretty big, actually. Um, if, if that's the scale there, 10 micrometers. Um, so this this whole thing is actually uh is actually quite large, uh, relatively speaking. I mean, what is that? spontaneously formed structure or well, that one anyway lots more examples in the uh paper 
do uh, look at it for yourself and check it out. The, the Guys, I'm going to leave this video there. The video goes on for another, like, what, uh, another 10 minutes or something, and it gives the – let me stop this. Guys, yeah, I'm going to stop this there because, you know, I'm, I'm going to put the video in the link. You know, I want to give full credit to, um, what's his name? I, th I think Dr. John Campbell. What's his name? I think it was Dr. John Campbell. Uh, yeah, I want to give full credit to Dr. John Campbell and the research paper that he's used. I will put all the links in my video. The top link will be a link to his video. And then I will replicate all the links that he's done underneath. Guys, I've got friends at Sheffield University who I spoke to this morning about this. I shared this video. You know, they said they had no idea. They're not in that particular sphere, but they're in a surrounding sphere. And I, and I presented the question to them. I said, look, you know, because you've got the scale there with the nano, nanometers or whatever it is. I said, look, you know, if this is real, let, let's just not worry about if it is or it isn't real. But if it, sorry, let's just assume for one second that it is real or whether it is real or not, it doesn't really matter. But can you tell me, I said, can you work out from that scale, from that graph, what, with that, with those little coils, what kind of frequency and what kind of transmitter you would need to use to cut, to operate something like with, with something like that? You know, and what kind of machinery are we looking at to operate? And what's the range? What's the scope? And I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to identify it at, at, from from that angle. Again, guys, I will be quite honest. I don't know if any of this is real. I don't know if it's it could all guys. It could all be a hoax. I don't know. What I'm telling you is the video I've just seen, and that's what I'm doing. Guys, bit of a weird one this morning. I just thought I'd get that out there to you guys and let you guys see what you think. Um, please go and watch Dr. John's video. Share my video if you want with anybody. And if anybody has any um, experience in radio frequency transmission and reception, put it in the comments, guys, what you think this could be if there was a tight, well, not even that big, like a tiny nano antenna. The video goes on and it talks about, you know, this is definitely evidence of nanotechnology in these, um, well, I'll let you watch it. I'll let you watch the full video itself. It's, I will let you watch the full video yourself, guys. Don't forget if you're putting your video, if you're, if you comment on Dr. John, let him know I sent you. Um, and that's it, guys. Don't forget to like and share my videos. I'm going to mag to grid. I'll get you another video later.